All right, look here. We're gonna take you into the, we walked through here and we found this rarity that you guys can see this wall being built or being assembled and put together. So I love this suction cup, Amanda. They grabbed the hold of the wall. The guy's got two more suction cups on the bottom that they grab a hold of and they can guide it in. This is high tech. It is very high tech. Yeah. I love it. Look at that. Gee, wonder who come up with that. I don't know. I wonder who come up with that. I wonder who was the guy who come up with that. I, I don't you. know. All right. See like right here, Amanda? This is a two inch flange here. So we've got flashing here. Then there's a two inch flange that goes over top of this flange. So the water, water just goes straight down, straight down. The only thing wood in this whole house is these floor joists. They're protected by, by the metal, of course, the flashing. And then underneath, we've got a pressure treated um, plywood okay. for our skirting, or our, yeah. our pan underneath, we call it. Yeah. And then we take, we take this door panel and um, we were using it for our loft material, but now we found that if we use new panels instead of them, we're taking these panels and we can build boxes and some other things so we can use for the off-grid. It's got a lot of different uses. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah, we're always tweaking them around. Like, see, these panels are, are dark gray. Yes. And we built that dark gray house, and it had the silver trim, and it looked awesome, but we cannot always request Always get that. These. Yeah, we never wow. know what we're gonna get. Yep. Yeah, everybody liked that color, that contrast. It that just looks, looks so cool. pretty. You know, in the future, I, I've always thought about when we started this, I thought, man, it'd be so cool if we could paint this while it's on the line. But because of the fumes, because of the dry time and yeah. everything, we just don't have the ability to figure that out. Okay, come up here. We had a, you know what? I might show that picture. We had a, a situation here this morning of a customer that called in, and I'm sure they will be watching this video. And But what happened was we had an actual fire inside of an Incredibox. Mm -hmm. And so let me explain to you what happened, and I'll show you the pictures of how it happened and then what's behind it, and then what we're doing about it, okay? And, and then how we can actually prevent this particular particular situation from happening. Mm -hmm. So, kind of catching me. All right, so, this here is a GFI. Let me see if I can go in. And a GFI, this is a plug in the kitchen. All right, the receptacle in the kitchen. All right, yes. let me pull up this other photo and let me go back. Oh, here's another good one I can that's show you. Number, yeah. Here's another one that shows the backsplash, and that is, that's right underneath that kitchen window. That's a GFI, and you can see where it caught on fire, or smoking, and just rolling out of there. Now, that's the butcher block. That's the butcher block on the bottom. So what's happened is, is the wire has caught on fire behind there. And so the plastic was burning behind that chase. Mm -hmm. And then the smoke from the, well, the wire was coming out of where it was at on the butcher mm -hmm. block. Okay. Okay. So um, homeowner called us, of course, distraught. I'm going to set my coat here. And uh, we were, you know, I was too, all of us. I got Tom, John Absolutely. in the office. We're all talking about this. We called the homeowner and kind of walking through what happened? Why did it happen? So, apparently, what happened was the uh, there was a big, large truck that hit a wire outside this place, like a transformer, and there was a massive surge of power through into the house. And Lucas will talk. He talked to the homeowner too again, but there was a power surge into the home. That power surge <clears throat> went directly to all the GFIs and damaged them. But you as a homeowner, you're not going to know that. I wouldn't, nobody's going to really know. Right. But when the power came back on and they flicked their power on, what happened was it immediately went into the GFIs that were damaged from that surge oh. and it just caught them on fire. Yeah. Now, that was the only one that has been caught on fire. So <clears throat> they need to be replaced. All yeah. the GFIs need to be replaced. So it's, it's not really, you know, something that was done wrong in the electrical part of here in our shop but it was that surge that caused them to go bad. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing, in, in because of a courtesy of our company and because we want them to be great, you know, they're, you all are all of our great customers. And you know, this is a rarity, but 
we right. need to help them. So yeah. we're sending John Harrison, he's our top engineer, you know, in inventory. He does it, he's done a, quite a bit of electrical Electric electronics oil. in our inventory. Mm -hmm. He's shipping out right now. Actually, we got the call, we're leaving within three hours of getting the call, heading to down to Florida. Probably a 10 or 12 hour drive. He'll go down there and fix this up. So if we got to replace the backsplash, all the TFIs, countertop, that's what it is. We want you guys to feel safe and know that we're standing behind our product, even though it wasn't our fault right. on this surge. But we just want to go through the house and make sure that they feel comfortable with everything else in there. Because you right. know when you get that, that makes you think, oh my gosh, is there something else wrong with this house? Right. There's something, and you start thinking about all that. It's just what we need to do. We're learning, they're learning, the world's learning about these homes, what we're doing, and I want to stand behind it. So don't think Absolutely. about you don't think about the cost. You got to get it done, all right? So right. within hours, we are on the road and heading out that way to yeah. make this take. And take too, care as of. the way it looks right now, just from here, you can't yeah. know until you're physically on site. Yeah. But as it looks to here, it seems like that the situation you said that's how it happened, and it's not a fault of ours. Yeah. We need to be able to go down there, or should be able, and most companies do yeah. not stand behind it. Go down there and say, you know what? It is not our fault. We want to make sure there wasn't anything that was done on our end that created this, but we got to help them as well. We want to, we want to know so we can do better. Is there any way of preventing this? And of course, there is a way there of is. preventing this. Yes. All right. Lucas is going to run us through this a little bit. Of course, he can talk more technical than I can. I'm a carpenter. I'm a builder. Lucas and John, they're more electricians and technical on the solar and other things. And I, okay. I'm so glad that we have all these segments of people that have really got a lot of knowledge right. here. But he's going to share with you how this can be prevented, even with a big surge like that or any other type of surges, electric surges, you can get in your tiny home. Okay. Let me find we'll him. Find him. Take a shot of that sticker on that door right there. Got it. All right. So what we're about to mean? show you how to prevent yep. what we were talking about earlier as an electrical fire or electrical surge. Yes. No, fire resulted from a surge, power surge. We got Lucas with us. We're going to go inside and we're going to show you um, the house, kind of how it was all wired and together and how to prevent that from happening. Okay. All right, so while Lucas is unwrapping these, these are EMPs, and Lucas will describe you, you know, tell you what they're all about, how they, how they work, and then I'm going to kind of show you from the picture we started with the video, this is the backsplash, and kind of how these wires are arranged. So when we run a kitchen, we always run, you know, there's a couple circuits. Now, Tom's added an extra plug to this house. This is the off-grid completely, 8 by 16 We've, uh, as you, we did a video we last week. This is a hunting cabin yeah. painted green on the outside. These are our shelves. There's no brackets underneath, free floating shelves that Tom built in here. Of course, a loft, which is awesome. He's taking this hunting again probably next weekend. And we got three more weeks to, to do some hunting on it. So we're going to bring some more videos to you of how this thing works off grid. Okay. All right, Lucas. We got that picture this morning, that situation. Tom, right tell us again, you talked to the homeowner and how it all come about and what happened. Okay, so. Seen situations like this happen a couple times throughout the years. One of them most notably was when the Gatlinburg fires happened. Mm -hmm. um, people's inverters got browned out from the transformer was burning on the pole right down from their house. Oh. So their house didn't burn and their property didn't burn, thankfully, but the electrical surge damaged their equipment. The, you can uh, over voltage equipment and damage it. And whenever you do that, sometimes like the control that's inside this GFI if that got surged out, then that GFI is not protected properly anymore, and then you can have a fire whenever electricity is put back to so it. So a surge <laughs> causes damage to that? Oh, to sensitive electronics, uh, medical, uh, CPAP machine, anything that's sensitive, like a, it, it gets hit with a surge, it could destroy it. So if you don't have a surge protector on your computer, things like that, that's whenever lightning strikes it your computer's fried. That's why they always say you have things on a well, see, surge I always protector. thought I always thought it was just lightning you had to worry about. Okay, so. No, and too. see, that's why like we live in a time where that cyber terrorism, mm -hmm. uh, failure of the electrical grid, uh, somebody hitting the nuclear football button, there's just so many ways you can damage stuff. And just like, for example, where I do cryptocurrency mining as a, as a side income. Yes, right. One day, Appalachian Electric went on, off, on, off, on, off, repetitive. It burnt the control boards out mm. in the top of the mining oh. unit. 
That was tons of money lost. Gosh. Thankfully, it didn't destroy the hash boards because you have hash boards, and you have the control board, and then you have your power supply. But to mitigate things like this, this company out of Kansas in America, I mean, if the person had that installed on their home, that wouldn't happen. This right here, the way these things work is real simple. This is a split phase 120 or 240 volt EMP block. And you can see these wires coming out of it. You have leg one and leg two, line one and line two. This is your AC wire. And then you have your neutral, and then you have this ground wire. When the electricity comes in and hits that, that shunts this to the ground wire straight to the ground instead of passing on to damage your electronics. Same thing with the DC block. You see here you have your red wire and your black wire and your ground. So you have your two lines that would run from your PV and you have the ground wire. So if a surge hit your panels and it came in, it would shun it to the ground before it made it to your charge control system, your inverter, and also the battery management system on your lithium batteries. And you can see an example right here in this cabinet. You can see this is protected right now. So if an electrical surge hit the photovoltaic, it would immediately dump that to the ground, out to your trailer, down to the ground. And that would protect that inverter. It would keep it from being damaged. Yes, it would protect uh, your charge control system and your inverter because all that's in one housing now. Okay. And um, <clears throat> sorry, I was going to show everybody full battery bank. These these inverters have been really good quality. Um, so anyway, with this here, whenever you plug in the house now. With the I box, you'll only see leg one because this is a 30 amp, 120 volt service. But if you have this on like something larger like the uh, the Birmingham, mm -hmm. and you have the Snyder unit, you would have both. Both would be on. Because yeah. it would be okay. a 50 amp service. But that's the difference between the two types of inverter setups. But this is protected irregardless because this is a split phase protected unit. And this is, this company, has a military certification, uh, CE certification, I believe, UL certification. I've lost track. Right. And if Uncle Sam buys it, you know it's good stuff. Right. And it's almost right. like you said they were they lay like warranty or, or insure. Hey, if something. Oh damaged. yeah. So the eight by sixteen uh, in credit box, just standard. If you put the in, the EMP block on it, I think it's insured for the value more of what we charge for the whole home. Really. Wow. Now that to me says it all. You Everything. know, and that that's the thing, you know, legacy is your your name's tied to this when the house goes out, my name's tied to this, your legacy's yeah. tied to this. We don't want to give people garbage. Like that there's protection behind this stuff that's yeah. being bought. And it's an American company too. You know, this I is not you. garbage from China. And and once this, again the military actually gave it a certification. Like there's a whole uh spreadsheet on it from okay. the military. So now this do we need to say that the house and I'm not sure I, I'm pretty sure I'm right on this. The house that this happened to down in Florida this morning, or last night or whenever it happened, um, was not an off-grid or solar home. It was just a regular Incredibox. Right. Correct. So they could um, get that AC, EMP. Yeah, EMP AC. How yep. does that get installed in, what is that called, just EMP protection? What is it? Okay, good Okay, question. so as the house comes down the assembly line, whether you're a standard home, a custom home, a full loadout, a full off-grid home, it doesn't matter. In 10 minutes time, the guys can install one of these on the back of your service one module. Okay. And now it's up to the customer really if they prefer it in this cabinet area or if they'd like to see it. But we figured it best to hide it because the LED lights, I just don't like blinky lights. But now if they don't have off-grid, they wouldn't be anywhere to hide it. But where would it be put if it's just, they just want the EMP? Well, now if they just get the AC EMP, we can put it directly behind their service directly panel and the closet area. Okay, just right. put it right That's back there. Service panel. Yeah, we okay. can actually mount it directly right behind there where the Perfect. service panel. Okay. And it's a 10 minute add-on. It will go directly behind the lugs on the main breaker. Good. If for some reason, if that would have happened the other night, now, of course, now I'm not the most high. I'm not, I can't see all things. Yeah. But as this is supposed to work and has been shown to work, mm -hmm. the surge would have happened. Okay, the, the tractor trailer would have hit the lines. The transformer would have da been damaged. There would have been that brown out there. There would have been that mass voltage surge. Yes. That would have hit that block, and then it would shine it to the ground. So it went to the ground. Yeah. Now, the only thing I would say is because I'm obsessive compulsive about safety mm -hmm. is that they say these can actually take multiple hits mm -hmm. from what I've understood. 
I would, this is a one and done. Now, if something like that ever did happen, I would encourage the customer to have a licensed electrician or us replace that unit and put a new one in. Got would it. you? Okay, yeah. yes. Yeah, you because, ship them one too. Yeah. Yeah. And the way the electric company does me at my own house, you know, shout out to them for constant fail. I would put one on, on my service constant panel. Constant fail. Yeah, so I would put that. I got the, Appalachian Electric too. It I'm goes out all the time. All the time. But it don't go out when the snow's on the ground. It goes out oh, today. No. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, Mine's probably off right now. <laughs> well, I want to ask you a question. You keep saying it, it grounds and goes to the ground. Yes. Now, does that mean that the homeowner needs to run a wire to the ground? Because we ground it to our frame. Yes. How does I that think, work? I really think, Randy, that it should. Okay, so the tongue actually, you know, when we put the, the hooks down, yeah. it touched there. But I don't think that's sufficient enough. Okay. I think you should put a regular grounding rod, mm -hmm. and we do it to the standard that, like, the spec sheet is go from your ground, ground your bond, your trailer. These are ground bonded, yeah. and then go straight to the ground rod. That yeah, way for the we most ground safety. to our trailer like an RV mm -hmm. camper to go on a motorhome and everything. So motorhome, when they stop, they don't drive a ground rod everywhere they're at. Now you know when we're hooked up to the power, there's a ground to the panel box that they're hooked to, and then there's a ground rod there. Is that sufficient? Well, um, the the thing with that situation is now the, everything backside of the house is at risk. Not this, you know. Right. We, we've su sufficed that but everything back channel right. upwards is right. at risk. But if they had that EMP and they don't have a ground rod from their trailer to there, was that ground sufficient enough to go back through their power supply to the meter center to that ground rod on the meter center to protect this house? Oh, man. I would say, yeah, because it is bonded. Because that's what it's, it's built common for. bonded, yeah. Right. But just for the extra safety, right. I would always default if so if anybody is here permanently in their home, they're set up, it's kind of good to get that ground rod in the ground and they can screw a, a copper wire from the trailer anywhere around here on the trailer to a ground rod and you're grounded because we ground everything to the trailer. Yeah, right? absolutely. And, Got it. and I mean, the thing people need to think about too is now if you go today and you pay an electrician today yes. to come out and put a whole house surgery like Siemens makes a phenomenal one. Okay. If they wanted to buy that and have it put in, they're going to be out. Hundreds of dollars for the park, hundreds of dollars for the electrician call. You're buying a house today, you pay for the amenity add-on, it goes straight on the wall, you get it out the door at the same time with everything else. Done. And you're protected. And, and this, I'm saying that, how much is the add-on? So if they were to do it for an 8x16 Yeah, the, e box, the EMPs are $1,000 a piece, DC each. or AC. Okay. Yep. And that protects you as a whole house surge arrester, then it protects you from lightning, then it protects you from uh, nuclear football, I mean, there's just yeah. a lot of different scenarios that that can help protect you from. So, okay. yeah. 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 So it was a, when I got that on my text this morning and Eric sent that to me, I was like, whoa, I said, Tom, Lucas, John, look at this. You know, how did this happen? And of course, I immediately, what did we do wrong? You know, I'm always, right. I'm always the one to throw the blame on me immediately. Sure. And so we wanted to make sure, you know, so we're going to go down there and because of our new line and what we're doing, I hope we do it forever, but we don't see this anymore, mm -hmm. but what's happened. And that way when it, you know, it's always learning. That's why yes. I always said to somebody, you know, when you have a business that's 10, 20 years old, mm -hmm. then the things you learn is what makes that company worth value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now if this happens again, we know what happened. We know now to mm -hmm. help people, help them understand what's going on. And if you do get a, a like that same thing happened to somebody, they mm -hmm. can reference this video and realize before I turn my power on. Yes. What would they have done? So if you would have had a surge, you did not have an EMP, what would you do to think about, hey, before I turn my power on, what do I need to do? Well, I would, that, actually they sell a tool that it's an outlet checker and it will check for like a dead short. You can plug it in and the guys use it on the line too to check for open, okay. you know, open line. So that would show that their, their GFIs have been damaged right. before they turn I their see. power back on, yeah. right? Well, now, but, okay, let's see. We don't know the situation unless you guys know mm -hmm. different. Were they sleeping? I, the one thing I think is important is for, for everybody to know that this house was checked here. Right. Before yep. it left and it passed inspection. Correct. Right. Okay. So we know that here. Did they, were they, a, did they hear the truck hit or, because he heard crackling and I think everybody needs to know. After that. he turned his power back on, he heard the crackling. He heard the crackling. Yeah, was it was wire separated. Wire See, the electrical okay. service was uh, separated from them. Well, then they unplugged the house for safety, which was good. Mm -hmm. That was a wise mm -hmm. decision. Very but wise. then when plugged back in was when it was fireworks and everybody needs to understand that now 
when brownouts and things like that occur, it's the sensitive things, just like GFI, stuff like that, things like that can happen, mm -hmm. it's game on then. Yeah. And, and, and another thing too, is I've seen electrical fires. They are honestly, in my opinion, one of the worst. If, if like my house was just gonna, the carpet in the house caught fire. I'd rather the carpet in the house catch fire than the, the wires in the, yeah. in the yeah. wall. Because it electrical fires, the it smell runs on, everywhere, doesn't it? Oh, the smell off of it, the the <clears> intensity <throat> of it, like it takes a class C fire extinguisher to put yeah. it out. A lot of people just got like a little A B uh, fire extinguisher. Yeah. Nowadays, it's getting pretty standard for an A B C type, to, and it's good to have. We put an A B C in all these houses because electrical that. fires yeah. are a trip. Yeah, you know, I'm tell you, you, do not want that to happen. Now, Randy, I want you to kind of walk through this. I think this would be important. So, yeah. is the chase? The, the chase thing. Right. What, is theirs metal or was it wood? It's wood. So okay, this so chase here is wood. Mm -hmm. And what the, all the smoke and the fire was these wires. So there's a wire that comes up through the floor mm -hmm. when we do our wiring right. up through the floor and it runs a home run to this plug. Mm -hmm. So there's a wire from this plug all the way to this panel box. All right. All the way to that box. And so when this, when this was damaged from the surge, yes. that wire right inside that fed back and got hot and yeah. just started melting all that wire back through here. So in that picture, that's what that smoke was coming out of these holes right here. Yes, right. It was blowing out of here. Now, we were just talking, Tom was saying, you know, okay, let's say that wire burns back. It's gonna burn out. The plastic and the coating around the wire is gonna end up being gone. Mm -hmm. May not get hot enough to catch this on fire. Okay. Let's just say this catches on fire. Okay. All right. There's, and of course, heat's gonna rise mainly whatever's above here is going to catch on fire, right? So the house is made out of steel. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be a raging, raging fire that you can't get out a window or door or see it and have time. I know it's still um, dangerous, but sure. you don't have V-groove on the walls. Right. You know, you don't have the polyurethane on the walls. You don't have some stuff going on mm -hmm. that keeps these house, uh, whole, I mean, super much, you know, fire right. resistant. Exactly. So. But still, I love that we don't have a lot of wood in here. Of course, we do sell all kinds of wood homes. So it could have been in a regular home. That could have happened. Yeah, you know, you'd lose everything. Paint on the walls, yeah. and it is gone. You know, so an incredible box is a little bit more fire resistant than a regular home. Mm -hmm. You know, I see. Yep. So is an EMP something you could put in the regular houses too? The wood houses? Any everything. home, so even we your might regular want to home. Start making it standard. You can like even put them in, in your garage. house. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. So it's not a bad idea. Yeah. Okay. People don't think about them. I never don't. I never thought about never. this, of course, till you mentioned it, you know. I never think about it. I never it. think about being surged and I always say, well, like lightning rod and I'm grounded, but that's not right. I mean you can lose computers and everything's electronic now. Oh yeah. yeah. And, and you get more and more. Oh my god, you're gonna fry everything. So it's just part of living in an electronic world mm -hmm. and there's something going on with the grid. It's going off and on, it off and on. It is a lot. It's so much old more. and it's taxed. Sorry, not to interrupt. No, it, it's, no, it's just ahead. old. Yeah, you it's, know about that more oh, than I do. Oh, yeah. I, I, you know, like when I worked off grid in Alaska, they had to literally fly propane tanks in to where the uh, cell towers were to keep the generators running for that because there's just, there's no infrastructure some places in America. And oh where the infrastructure gosh. is, it's old and taxed. You know, you see the new shopping mall get built. It looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. You look behind it where the transformer unit is, then it goes up to old telephone pole that's leaning on its last, you know, you got all the timber. splinter marks. Yeah, the it. splinters, it's about to, I wow. mean, and you know, you drive through like Sevier County, you know, you can see after a snow where that like some of the poles yeah. are just hanging and this one's only being suspended because the, you know, the bottom's ripped. And yeah. it's, you know, unlike Europe, you know, where they've got like a lot of underground utilities and things like that. Man, we just, underground power is so, it's, it's sweet. looks better and it's, Beautiful. it's probably safer. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. lasts longer. Yeah. Well, that yeah. see, that was overhead that that guy hit, and or whoever yeah. was driving that it truck hit that in Florida. You go. And you got overhead transformers, and yes. when those fail, I don't know if people's ever seen them catch fire. Now that's fireworks show watching because really? they've wow. got the transformer because they've yeah. got the oil that's inside of that that mm. that protects the uh, bomb, transformer. Maybe. And this electricity is so dangerous. People have yeah. no idea. Like you. These off-grid systems, I just had a talk with the guys the other day and I told everybody, I said, we've produced hundreds of homes here now. Mm -hmm. It is a miracle 
that you know nothing's wrong because just of the influx of so much yeah. we build. Right. Like every day's a miracle. We have a good day, you know, because yeah. we do stuff here at a rate that I have never seen, mm-hmm. like production wow. wise. So yeah, and that, you know, Tony, and, and and of course I'm going to brag on our company. But you guys know Lucas. You can tell by the way he's talking and by the way we conduct ourselves that we care about what we're doing. I would never venture it. We're giving solar away. We're not making a profit. Mm -hmm. I would never venture into this if it wasn't for him knowing what he's doing to help us. He's giving his free advice, right? Because he's not a solar guy here. He is our project manager for the Incredibox. Mm -hmm. So he's giving us free advice to know what to do with this solar and how to be professional with it. You yeah. know? And then we've got uh, several electricians and people have been in the industry for a long time. So that's why I, I feel good about what we're doing you right. know, in our training process. So, yeah. And two, you know, the homeowners, if, they, if you're watching this video, please feel free, of course, to comment and yeah. answer any questions that people might have because you were actually there. And then whenever John, is it John that's going down there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then when John goes down there, then he can, uh, we'll do another video. Yeah. And give an update on what he's seen, how it all looks, everything I'll like I'll get that. with John and see if he can do some videos when he walks up. And do, what he's doing and talking to the homeowner and that. Because okay. we want to educate you guys, yes. us. And of course, you guys know, I don't know what other company would send you a video and stuff and tell you about what went wrong they in the process. But it. we want you to be safe and we want yeah. to learn and we want you to learn and we want you to know that this is happening. This is real life. And I think it just makes us all a better company. Well, and we're very happy, all of us are, that they are safe, that he was oh smart enough. So yeah. one of the things I want to point out, too, is that Lucas, when he heard that crackling, did he do the right thing by running and unplugging the house first thing? Yeah, yeah, because at that point, the best thing you can do is, to, okay, people don't see electricity, but it's there. It's and there. when you touch it, I've touched 240 and 120, me believe too. me, it's an electrifying yeah. feeling. <laughs> When, when he turned that off, he literally saved that from being much worse because you don't want uh, to have an energy source keep going when you're trying to extinguish that. Could he yeah. have turned the main breaker off? Would have that stopped oh, it? Oh, yeah, you can you can cut anywhere he could stop it, the so, energized so source. So you do that, yeah. yeah. So this is, this is our, our panel box. The main breaker is this 30 amp breaker. It's the largest breaker in here. It's his main You shut main. that down, you shut the whole, all the electricity off in the house. Okay. Correct? Yeah. Main, main. So you no. don't have to go outside and unplug the house. Worse, that's great too. I'm glad he did. Or yeah. you can just do that breaker right there. And, yeah. and the good thing about anybody that's got the off-grid system too is now that inverter, if it senses something like that happen, it will turn itself off. Really? It has uh, built in in the firmware to disconnect from that. So that's, that's another reason I'm really proud of Midnight Classic, what they've done with that. We have really... I think struck gold with, yeah. with putting them in, but that uh, we because what happened was somebody had put their cord together at their property when they received it. I guess yeah, put it back right. They did. It shut off immediately. Come in the house Good. and uh, and okay. it's it safety checked. Yeah. Plus, there's breakers on the batteries. There's a fuse block here. There's safety on the inverter. There's a fuse on the inverter. There's a fuse behind the inverter, and then there's at the service panel, and there's one in here. I mean, and a like, surge could still come in and destroy all that, but that shuts that stuff down. Right. right. Yeah. Now that that. If, if that got hit like that a time or two, that could damage your equipment. Right. Like okay. it, right. It, it's, uh, I mean, I've got a customer here local. I've got to uh, go put a new Magnum inverter in their house because the utility company in Cock County had a brownout, mm-hmm. and it damaged the control board in the uh, mm-hmm. inverter. So wow. it, it's not every time that happens, but it's like if you have a whole house surge arrestor or Th- that. That would have prevented that. That's, huh? that's the whole existence of that tool is to, in a got millisecond, it put it to the ground wow. instead of going to your equipment. So. And what do we use to test our houses? What kind of equipment do we use? So we have the ANSI testing mm-hmm. equipment. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also, as the house comes down the line, we do an off-grid power check. We do an off-grid power check hooked to the utility. We do an off-grid power check independently, and then we do it with the ANSI equipment as well. So the house is on electricity for probably an hour or two at a time every house yes. during the day. And okay. the thing is with the off-grid power, people need to understand is DC power, you do it wrong, you're gonna know immediately. Really? Like it's a, it either works or it don't. Now AC, it can sneak up on you, you know, mm-hmm. like, uh, but that, that situation that happened there, that can definitely be yeah. mitigated if you do the right thing. Yeah. So we're going down there, we're gonna make sure everything's yes. good. Go, we wanna reassure them, you know, they just got their Incredibox, you know, we've been in this a short time mm-hmm. still. So we want to make sure, hey, they feel good about what we've done, what's going on, go through it all. And we don't mind doing it. I think this is a learning process for all of us. Absolutely. You know? it's a, yeah. you know. 
It, yeah. it is not always about the dollar of how much it's going to cost John right. to go down there and the company and all that stuff. That, that doesn't matter. It's just mm -hmm. you've got to do this. It's part of an owning a business and That's supplying right. a service to people. You know? Yeah, and it's so, always safety first. Oh, my God. I was, I'm glad you said it because Lucas, I've always asked him about lithium. I've always yes. wanted lithium. He said, I don't like it. I won't do it. I won't do it. I won't do it. And he still, he wouldn't do it until this battery came out. It's UL listed, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, I don't feel comfortable until that one came out and it's encased in a fireproof metal um, box, right? Right, inside. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, I I'm going to put the sign above the new office door whenever it gets done up there next to Billy that has a little thing that says, we build people's hopes and dreams. Oh, Not man. houses, you know, but hopes and dreams. And a reminder to the guys, because, like, uh, this is some serious stuff and... You know, um, those got a breaker system built into it, so like, you can set it and forget it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and we're going to take pictures of that, mm -hmm. and we're going to put it up in the electrical department. We want guys to realize how important their electrical abilities yes. are in our homes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So and, they can and it see gives it. a reminder too. People live in these homes. Yeah, they do. They yeah. live in these homes, so it's actual people that live in these homes and that take these homes. So. And you already had the meeting, or you're going to have a meeting today to show the guys, hey. Oh, I already did. You already did. Yeah, okay, yeah. so see, we're, we're trying to do as much preventative and post-learning yeah. as possible. Yeah, that, with this. that text from the customer shut us all down. We yes. stopped everything, mm -hmm. got on it, took care of it, got it on That's the road, right. talked to the guys, immediately just a lot. Nothing's more important. Oh, my gosh. No, Absolutely. Never, ever. So. All right. Great information. Good. That was a great informative video. I hope mm -hmm. you guys like this. Subscribe, thumbs up. Hate saying all that at the end of the I know. video. Exactly. All right. Thank you all. Thank you, guys.